Hello friends. Welcome to my channel or back to my channel as the case may be. Today the story I'd like to share is that of the blood clot and the buffalo. This story comes to us from one of the North American native tribes, specifically the Ute of the Great Basin. Long ago, a man followed a herd of buffalo. Game was scarce, and it was difficult to hunt. As he followed their tracks, he did not come across the buffalo themselves, but eventually came across a large blood clot, just lying on the ground. Because he and his wife were hungry, he wrapped it up and brought it home for his wife to cook. She took the blood clot, placed it in a pot, of boiling water. But not too long after, they started to hear cries from within the pot. When they lifted the lid, they saw not a blood clot, but a child. Swiftly, they pulled the baby boy from the pot and raised him as their own, knowing that the boy would need a name. They chose to name him after what he came from, blood clot. Blood clot grew with his family becoming a hunter himself. His father proudly noted his abilities as he started bringing back larger and larger game. He started with cottontail rabbits, then badgers, deer, and elk, mountain goats, mountain lions, beavers, and otters. Having learned how to hunt the game of the land and of the rivers, his father was very proud. One day, Blood Clot decided that he wanted to see what a larger tribe looked like, for he had spent his entire life with just his mother and father in the wilderness. But knowing that his father would struggle to hunt and his mother would be hungry, he promised to go hunting one last time before he left, but that as he did, his parents would need to stay within the teepee. He would hunt all night and all day for them. So his parents secured the flap to the teepee and went to sleep for the night. During the night, they heard a great wind, a storm. They heard many beasts running past, but they followed their son's instructions. In the morning, Blood Clot called out to his parents that it was safe to exit the teepee. And when they did, they saw, lying around the teepee, a great number of buffalo. He instructed them to dry the meat that it would last many moons and to prepare the hides that they would be warm in the cold months. Before leaving, he asked that his mother prepare him lunch one more time before he journeyed to find a larger tribe. His parents cried aloud and begged that he might one day return to them. After traveling for a few days, Blood Clot found his way to a much larger tribe. When he found the village, to sit by his side and tell him the tale of his journeys, after relaying his trip of crossing fields and mountains, forests and rivers, the chief asked Blood Clot, And from what tribe do you hail? Blood Clot merely shook his head. He had no idea. He had spent all of his time with only his mother and his father in the wilderness. Then the chief invited his people to come meet Blood Clot and to guess as to his origins. Some said that he must be from the tribe of elk, others the tribe of beaver, the tribe of deer, or the tribe of otters. But with each guest, they became less sure until one old man of the tribe said, While those others are fine tribes, I do believe this young man is from the tribe of Buffalo. Blood Clot thought about this carefully and agreed. Seeing how mighty Blood Clot was as both a hunter and a warrior, the chief asked that he stay and marry his daughter. Blood Clot agreed and soon joined the tribe in hunting. The day before his wedding, Blood Clot requested that he be allowed to hunt on his own, and cautioned the tribe that they must all remain inside, for it would be dangerous to exit their homes, their tents. The rest of the tribe did as he requested, even though during the course of the night they heard the hooves of many mighty beasts, and rushing wind, and cracks of thunder. In the morning, Blood Clot called out to the tribe that it was safe to exit their homes, and they marveled, for in front of every opening there was a buffalo. He told the tribe, this is my gift to you, as I am now one of your tribe, as I marry this day. After the feasting was done and the marriage complete, he cautioned his new bride to never say the word calf when a buffalo was present. 
for if he would, he was not sure what would happen to him, because he came from the blood clot of a calf after all. His wife took this to heart, but as often happens, when there is excitement or danger, careless words can fall from our lips. Many months after their marriage, when the whole tribe was out hunting, there was a stampede, and without thinking, she pointed out a calf that was falling behind the rest and said, There! That calf! Slay it! Only to watch as her husband, Blood Clot, ran forward first on two legs, then on four as he transformed into a buffalo and fled with the rest of the herd forever afterward to be amongst the tribe of buffalo. One of the things I'm noticing about many of these myths from the Native Americans, from the specifically the North America tribes, is this concept of transformation and loss of husbands or wives who come from mysterious origins and then disappear back into the wilds. Mythology is to explain that which is either not possible to understand or very difficult. And it makes sense. Personally, I believe many of these transformation myths, personally, I believe many of these transformation myths where people turn into animals and then live amongst their respective animal types again are are stories to explain what happens when someone dies. Because in many ways it's easier to think of a lost hunter running with the buffalo than it is to contemplate mortality. Just my thought at the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed the story. If you did, leave a like. If you've got other stories you'd like me to tell, tell me in the comments. And until next time, walk in the light, my friends. Bye.